You don't cast. Last, last. Now everybody go to our breakfast. Shayo. To discuss it, cause I did win by default and without any doubt, though. I'm a me, I be a doubt, though. I know go feed the girl, I know go feed the girl is up, though. I'm a mind as you be talk, oh. I put my life into my job and I know I'm in trouble. She manipulate my love, oh. Shit, yeah, man. You don't know the slang, you over there front and shit. <laughs> Nigga over there speaking Spanish and shit. <laughs> That's a whole vibe right there. You hear me? She be coming through with the tricks. Oh, the right way. Make shit blood glisten in the nighttime. Just make shit glow. It's all okay. heavy. I mean, uh. Uh, space shit, but I'll be one night in space. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, we, we going up yeah. today, god damn it. You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. I'm going to put your headphones on. Oh, man. You want to give them the proper introduction? Uh, you got it. Go I, th- I, think, I think you should give them the proper introduction. Who we got here today? You might you might know more than me. Huh? Who, who we got? Heavy D from PA City. Who? Heavy D from PH City. Who that? My granddad actually used to call me that. Who Who, that? Wait, wait, come up to the mic where you talk. So my granddad actually used to call me that. Your that's granddad crazy. used to call you that, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, that's right. I'm oh, talking I about. Th- I thought we had Burning up here. Did- you ain't got oh, you see, that's what you know him as. I don't know. <laughs> shit, I don't yeah, know him as that. Deep. I know him as Heavy D from PH City, you know what I mean? Hi, what the hell, 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 Nigga, one home mom beat that nigga ass so bad he was light skin. You hear me? Yep. <laughs> and then they came out the next day, he was light skin. He was like, Burner? Burner? Light skin. He was like, Heavy D? She burnt that ass. Yeah, she, yeah. This shit is crazy, though. Whooped his ass. <laughs> what the fuck? Whooped his, whooped his ass. Whooped his ass. Yeah, that's who I know, man. But what's up, man? We got bro, this shit is not even on the internet, bro. Right. So we know people. We know people that but know listen, people. But listen, how did it feel? You know, I don't, I don't know if you know the significance of it because. You just looking at it like, oh, oh, you know, you know, it was one night in space and all that. How did it feel to be the king of New York? Because if you sell Madison Square Garden, uh, how do uh, I'm talking about when you young, you growing up, you listening to hip hop, you run around with the band aid on you. you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, but he also used to have his pants hanging off his ass now. Yeah, uh, too. Yeah. I did. You come to a, you come to America, the biggest city, one of the biggest cities in the world. You sell out Madison Square Garden. How do that feel knowing that you? You got you got your country on your back, and you representing them right. How do you do you do you sit back and think about that shit? Um, every day, every single day. You know what I mean? And the thoughts vary. You know, they vary from high to low. You know, it's like obviously it's something that's that's an honor. It's a great honor to me, but at the same time, it's something that comes with a lot of um, negative eyes. You understand? So, so it's like it makes me, it puts me in a higher place and in a greater place and in a and in a um, more positive place. You understand when it comes to my people and all that. But it also puts me in a very vulnerable place. You get me in a place where where it's like um yeah, it's like you just have to say my name and <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know everything. 
everything you can just put whatever after that and then it just goes you know so it's a it's a two it's a two side two two sided coin you know and 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 I understand the flip side of that coin but you know when you a chosen one like yourself to you know not just just you you a leader of a fucking continent mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying anytime you you going to be great that's going to come with some hate facts that's that's just how the game go Hate haters is your marketing team though let them work i mean i do but like you know sometimes even they be like wow yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know uh -huh. so yeah still still we give thanks you know alhamdulillah you know alhamdulillah but before we go any further this episode of million dollars worth of game is brought to you by new, new Amsterdam, Amsterdam vodka <laughs> now um you know uh <sighs> Life ain't going your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Caught your bitch cheating today. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Yup. You, you, you with your homies, y'all having fun. Y'all gonna go get some chicks and y'all going to a Burner Boy concert today. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Yup, it's the still five times. Five, 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 Filtered three times. Three, 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 if you three. speak Spanish, that's uno, dos, dos tres. tres, you know. And, uh, you know, for that clean, crisp finish, you know, you could drink it straight up. You could drink it on the rocks, juice, soda. Mm -hmm. or you could just make a classic New Amsterdam mule. But when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you get some New Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports and the presenting sponsor of Million Dollars Worth of Game. And as you know, right now is baseball going on. It's all types of sports. It's great for pregaming. So make sure you pick you up some New Amsterdam vodka. Yeah, oh, bring some in. Bring some yeah. of that New Amsterdam. In. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bring, bring, bring the New Amsterdam. Where is the New Amsterdam at? It is real. Right. Got all type of flavors for you, man. Come on, bring it in. Oh he get, shit! Is, yeah, he getting yeah, get all yeah, the special right. flavors. Look at oh, that. Oh right. shit! You know yeah, what I mean? mean we got you can the take that. Fruit. You taking that with you? You yeah, taking we that got with the, the crew? Fruit. We got that. the. We got that. That's, that. that's for you and the crew. We got that. Turn it around. Turn it around so they can see. We got the grapefruit. We got the London Dry. We got the. Talking to Mike, yo. Hey, let me get something to chase it with, though, because this looks dangerous. Uh, now, burner. Yes. I'll give you some of my ice because I got too much. That's cool. Uh -huh. He done turned mm. into a bartender, nigga. Look at this shit. We got the goddamn. Burner the bartender. We got the richest bartender burn bar. ever. You hear me? Burner's bar. Burner's bar. You hear me? Grapefruit. What's this one right here? This That's is a just regular. the regular. That's the regular. I'm drinking whatever you drinking. I mean, you know. Uh, let's do the grapefruit. All right, let's do the grapefruit. They turn it up. They really turn up. Mean? So this is the uh, our tradition. You have to, everyone has to touch. He ain't never drank a smoke in his life. Yeah, never. He's a loser. Never had a great time. Damn. He said, "Damn, he, he made him feel like like I ain't got no life." You don't. He said, "He said, damn." What do you mean you never smoked a drink? You ain't got no fucking said, life. <laughs> what kind of life is that? Yeah, I don't need nothing. I don't drink. That he don't drink. Nah, he he like he like I'm missing out on life. Hey, yeah. hey JB, come get this, man. Come on, JB. We're we about to waste come this shit. This. Yeah, we know. Can I even give him some of my ice, man? Come on, JB. <laughs> Come on, he man. Is that my ice? Come get some of this. JB must be the nigga that put him back. Yeah, he put him back. There's a talking. bunch of niggas he came over in there. He said, JB! JB was looking for some New Amsterdam when he came in here. He was like, yeah. where the New Amsterdam at? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, we cool now. We in the game now. We in the game now. In the game. I mean, I mean, I mean. Yeah, you know I mean. To the to the legend that's number one on the, you know, we just checked the Afro that's charts. He just owned them. We ain't even gonna talk about them. Yeah. He just owned them charts. Woo. It's like number one last week, number one this week, number one won't be the week after that, the week <laughs> after that. But growing up in Africa, having your own continent, being a man over there, was you thinking about, I want to be big in the States? Or was you cool with just being big at where you from and that shit just happened? What was your mindset? Did, did it just happen organically, or did was you like, was you pushing like, no, I want to be big in the states? It's like, it wasn't really the states per se, but it was always a thing where it's like I always knew I was, I was bigger than the space I was in. You know, I mm. just always knew like where I, where I was at is not where, it's not where I belong. You understand? I didn't belong in 
that situation or in that place, you understand? I belonged in the world, you understand? Because as far back as I remember, I identified myself as a global citizen and not a citizen of any country or any, you know, like, right. that's uh, that's always how I saw myself. I never saw myself as um, the, the guy from here or from this and that. No, I always wanted it to be something where if you're from China or you're from India, or from anywhere, you can see me and identify. Right. You understand? Because right. there's something that you can ad- identify with. You understand? So right. it's the same thing with the U.S. That's 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 just kind of always how I saw myself. I never saw my. I was never content with where I was. You know. So it was more like I make African sound music, but it's a global thing. Exactly. This is a global sound. This is a sound that you can play in Japan. And you can play in Dubai, exactly. and you can play in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and so I understand the mindset you said. You know, you just wasn't making music for African people. No. You know, mm-hmm. when your mindset was, you know, I, I'm trying to make global music. I'm trying to make festival music. Exactly. I'm trying to make music. I can perform in a village in Nigeria, in a village in in Gambia, and in East, West, and North or South of Africa, and in the whole world, and in China, and in U.S. and in, you know, big stadiums in the U.K., you know, like the same song. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of what I wanted. And it never it was never a thing of, oh, because I speak this language or that language. I feel like the music in itself is a language. Right. You understand? And it's, it's the most universal language, you know, because okay. so, there's a bunch of songs that I don't even know what they're saying. Right, but you enjoy it. <laughs> but I can sing word for word. Right. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Right. And I feel it when right. I sing it. Right. You understand? So, yeah, that's kind of the same thing I felt with Rest in Peace, Sidhu Musewala, who just died. He's a, he was like a legend from India, you know, from Punjab, you know, and his music from the <coughs> beginning, even before we we got, you know, close and, you know, started working on a mixtape that might never come out now. Um, yeah, man, I would just I just felt the music. I just felt like, like, bruh, like, I could have made this. <laughs> right. You know, right. even if I don't even speak no... Right. Punjab or none, right. you feel me? Right. But I could literally sing most of the songs that I that I fuck with word for word. Don't even know the and language. And I don't even know what it means. Right. You understand? Right. Uh, it's so real. that just means there's a great fucking melody and a great beat. Yeah. And, and great it talks melodies. to your soul. Right. It really talks to your soul. Like right. Whatever is telling your soul, whether it's good or bad, it's just it's still talking to your soul. Right. You know? When you say where I'm from is a part of where I'm going, what do you mean? So... It means that, like, without coming from where I'm from, I wouldn't be able to see the world in the way I see it. You understand? I wouldn't be able to understand a lot of things that <laughs> that um, that person who who is content with where he is and you know just wants to be there would understand. He wouldn't understand anything I'm trying to really right. say. You understand? But when you when you when you know that look your purpose is is bigger than any one place or person, then you begin to, you know, just just take life like that and see life like that. Mm-hmm. And see everywhere you go like that. You feel me? Right. If I come to America I'm seeing the way I see the America <laughs> might not be the same way another person, another artist who's coming from exactly where I'm coming from mm-hmm. will see it. Right. You understand? That's right. because we might be from the same place, but we're not from the same place. Right. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, it, no, makes, no, it, it makes, makes sense. 100% sense. <laughs> you you know understand? what I mean? Because so, we can both be from North Philly, but we don't vision life the same. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. And for you to vision life as a global citizen coming from where I'm coming from, I mean, it's a lot of people don't even vision that. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And 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 I don't, I can't blame anyone. There are a lot of people that do st- yeah. at the same time. Right. But you know, you know how it goes in life. The majority is always on the bad side. Right. <laughs> you feel right. me? So, so you you from Nigeria, right? I know I got a good friend. A good. Everybody has a good friend from Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I got a good friend that's from Liberia, uh, and he told me, you know, he was telling me how he was raised. You know what I mean? He grew up in a you know in a village in Liberia. You know, he's a little older than y'all, so he had to escape war and you know 
do all this crazy shit. And, you know, did you come up in a village in, no. in Nigeria? No. Oh, okay. Because, you know. I mean, we're all from villages. Yeah. You understand? But Explain that. Break that down when you say that. Okay. So, basically, everyone is from some village or and then you make it to the city and then you just keep going like that. That's the normal. <laughs> oh, so you come from a thinking. village, then you make yeah. it to the city. That's like we moved up yeah, a little bit, yeah. and then and then you just go, try to progress in yeah, life. And then you go to the world, and you know, yeah, that's kind of how it is. So I mean, my father did the village side for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I went to my to my village a lot, like when I was younger and stuff. Right. You know? and but your father mom, was the one that broke the curse. Yeah, you know. So um, yeah, we got to the city and. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was amazing, you know. Right. And at the same time, it it, it kind of shows you how to really what really the world is like uh, without any filters. <laughs> right. Right. You understand? So yeah. this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Two Laws Records. One thing about Two Laws, listen, go to twolaws.com. This is where independent artists take control. I'm talking about from your basement to Berlin. Two Laws brings the world close. I'm talking about this is not your average, like, <laughs> this ain't where you just put your stuff up, your music up, you send it up there and nothing happened. I'm talking about let this level the playing field with premier global partnerships, independent artists. Now, I'm talking about <laughs> the access is like, man, unmatched. The access that independent artists have right now on Two Laws, this is, this is, listen, man, you're not just, you're not someplace you just upload your music and sit there and be like, okay, I hope people discover me. I hope people see me. I hope no. They're gonna partner you up with the right people, places, and things in order to take you to the destinations that's awaiting your arrival. That's what Two Loss is about. Two Loss Records is not playing no games. You need to go to twoloss.com right now. That's T O O L O S E dot com. Go there right now. They're not playing. Manage your music without the middleman. No middleman. Two Loss. What is you waiting for? I know where I'm going at. Where you going at? Two Loss. You saying? You ain't got no kids. You're doing your thing. Success. You just massive out here. Everything is going good and bad at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you express that? You know what I mean? Man, music is the savior, man. Music is the only way, really, because you can't. I can't come out on social media or on TV or on whatever and express myself. You understand? Because even when I do try, it's like you can't win. You can't. <laughs> You can't expect yourself to be understood by everyone, you know. So, for me, I'm blessed to have music, which, you know, I just pour that all out in and just kind of move on. <laughs> one thing I see, one thing I see that you do good, you, 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 you protect your privacy. You real private. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain it in the world where everybody got the lights on you? Everybody trying to be, you know, in your business. You know, how do you how do you maintain that? Man, it's something I'm never gonna lie. It's something I I learned recently, not too long ago. It's something I picked up and like I'm not, and it's really helped me so far. You know, it's you have to understand, man. It's like they're gonna have their view of you regardless. It's like, and perception they say in this day and age is reality. You understand? So. For me, I don't, if I start to allow the perception become my reality deep down. You see, it's one thing, a ship, yeah, a ship does not sink because of the water around. Uh -uh. A, ship will, a, a ship will sink because of the water that gets in. Uh -huh. You understand? So for me, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to allow the water that's outside to get in my ship and sink it. Right. I'm the only one that can do that. Right. You understand? And from the moment you realize that you're the only one that can allow this water, because that water is going to be around the ship regardless. It's a ship. <laughs> you understand? That's what we. That's why. That's what we are. We, we're ships on this river, and the river we're surrounded by water. Now, are you going to allow that water get in your ship? Right. Right. You feel me? So that's my. That's my thing. I'm not. The moment I start to, to show, and scream, and uh, many times I've let the water get in my ship. You understand? And. Oh. And you know, somehow, Alhamdulillah, it didn't sink. <laughs> right. But we managed to get the water out. Right. You understand? So, 
really and truly it's it's, it's, it's something that we're just li- we st- we're just living and learning man you know right. yeah. and, and let me break down what he's saying just in case you know if there's some youngins out there and they watching and they don't get you know the water in the ship you know they they like what he's saying is he don't let the negativity into his life the demons the bad things he try to keep block all of that shit away so if this a guy right here, and I fuck with you, but you not good for what I got going on. I can't fuck with you. I got to fuck Ux. with you from a distance. Over there. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what he's saying when he's saying he can't let the water get in his ship and sink the ship. That's because if he burn a boy and he doing gigantic shit out here, he got to surround himself with motherfuckers that's going to be an asset and not a liability. You feel what I'm saying? You gotta bring something to the table. You gotta, you gotta, you feel what I'm saying? Because this is a ship that's trying to keep moving. It ain't trying to sink. Exactly. And at the end of the day, a lot of times, a lot of motherfuckers who get cut off and then be back in the hood or back at home and they talking crazy or they don't fuck with me no more. No, nigga, you were sinking the ship, nigga. Facts. Yeah. The ship was rolling and you had a drill and you had the bottom of the ship poking holes in that motherfucker, yep. man. Oh, dumb show shit. him off. Yep. Because right. ain't nothing going to stop this shit from moving. When you really believe and you love what you do and you give a fuck and you feeding your family and you done came from a, a place that you could never think that you would be in and now you here, can, you can't allow shit to sink your ship. So I just wanted to give y'all that narrative because y'all, some people might sit back and they hear it and it sounds good, but they don't really understand what he's talking about. Everybody can't go. Everybody can't go. And it's not that a uh, motherfucker don't love you, just your mind ain't ready and your alarm clock ain't cut on yet. And, that, and that's how it be. Now, break down for us Afrofusion. Uh. Because, you know, everybody categorize things and they put things in their box and they try to box people and say, oh no, all of them is this. You say, no, I'm Afrofusion. Exactly. I'm not Afrobeast, why? Man, because for me, it's like, the same way you're not going to say um, um, Nas is an R&B singer because he's, an, he's from America. Mm-hmm. And the most famous, well, that was the wrong analogy. You won't say um, fucking Whitney Houston was a rapper <laughs> because rap is the most popping yeah. thing now. Right. You understand? And she's American, so she must be a rapper. Right. I can't accept that because I'm not a rapper. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You understand? Because right. so now it's like in Africa, what you going? What you when you talk about music, first thing you they say Afrobeat. So who gave that Afrobeats the name? Did that was that developed in Africa or did the states put that on y'all? Oh, that's so Afrobeats. Let me, so let me let me let me explain it to you. Afrobeats is Fela Kuti. Fela, it's a legend called Fela Kuti. That's his. Your grandfather managed him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was a that was that's Afrobeat. Mm-hmm. You understand now? Years went by. Years went by, and um, yeah, Nigerian musicians started you know, becoming, started dropping music that was becoming something. Yeah. So, naturally a name, <laughs> they needed to call, so call it something to be able to. Identify with Yes, it. you understand? And somehow they just said Afrobeat and added an, and added an S. I don't know how, I don't know what sense <laughs> even that made, but that's what happened. You understand? And somewhere along the line, all the music that comes from Africa now, they just write Afro beats. So, but this is what I'm asking you. It did, the name was originated, the Afro beats. It was not named Afro beats. It was called Afro beat. Beat. And that was only Fela. So who put the S on it? Was it the States? I have no idea. Maybe it's it's the UK or maybe it's, I don't know who. But somebody but did. But it didn't. It wasn't it beats wasn't, in uh, Africa. It, yeah, it wasn't Afro beats in oh, Africa. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you understand? We had high life. We have, uh, we have a uh, juju music. We have Fuji music. We have, we have all types of music. We have um, uh, South African Kwaito music. We have uh, a, a piano now. We have all types of music. But so, 
And we will have to be fun to be real. <laughs> we have r- real African hip hop, like real yeah. African, like yes, you know. So we have Afro pop. We have yeah. all types of genres in Africa. So to be to be really sincere, for you to just call everything Afro beats, yeah, it's kind of it kind of does a disservice to to the artists. Yeah. Because, because you're putting everybody in one fucking yeah, genre. You don't put Whitney Houston and Jay-Z in the same genre. Exactly. So for me, it's like when I started the Afrofusion thing, it's like my music was not the same as any, yeah. anything that was out. It's like everybody else's stuff kind of sounded the same, not to be, you know, funny. But this is what it was. It was one kind of move. And for me, I just wasn't, there was nothing that I could identify myself with. So I just said, you know what? <laughs> I'll call it Afro fusion because it's a fusion of everything, really. And Afro, the Afro, the Afro Africanness is the is the thing that covers it. That is is the bowl is the bottle that holds the whole drink. You understand what I mean? So for me, that's why I always make sure that everybody knows this is what I do. It's Afro fusion. You understand? So I mean. However you want to um, run with that is up to you, you know. So when you see me on Afrobeat charts and Afrobeat, whatever, it's because, I mean, maybe Afrobeat is the big umbrella and then there's all yeah. these sub right. I don't know. <laughs> I can't really tell you. Right. Was uh, Is there anybody else that you identify as Afrofusion too? No. No. That's, 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 your, that's your thing now. Mm-hmm. You say your father... I mean, your grandfather was the manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fela. How do I say it right? Fela. 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 Uh, Fela. Did you inherit any of that sauce? Of course. And what was? What did you take from? You know, was it? You know, was you? Was you there to watch? No, I wasn't. I wasn't even was, born. All right, but I'm talking <laughs> about was you? What sauce did you get from your grandfather? I from, mean, for me, he's somebody who would call me in at any moment <laughs> and drop his two cents. You understand? He's someone that's been always active in my musical um, journey, journey and musical. The, me Process. finding out, me yeah. finding out that I can make music. Yeah, <laughs> you understand? It's a huge, there's a huge load of things to go to him because um, at first I didn't even like African music when I was younger. He was running around singing hip hop already. Yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah, you down with OPB? No, he was. Like, I'm going down, 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 baby. No, that was much later. Like, <laughs> was much later. like <laughs> was later. Nelly was old. It was, yeah, yeah. Talking about foundation shit, the DMX is <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 the oh, naughty yeah. by nature. Yeah, DMX, you know, I can see DMX. Yeah. Let's take yeah. yeah. DMX, DMX had like all young. That. Burn you be on that stage, bro, I was growling. DMX, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when you be on that stage, yeah. So, like, I mean, yeah, that's something that I, I just always identified with I never wanted all that fella shit was I wasn't fucking with it when I was younger but then it's like it took it took me leaving Nigeria and just being in a place where I wanted to forget I was even Nigerian <laughs> you understand like I wouldn't even what why did that come about did you wanted to did you need bro I wasn't to be honest I wasn't proud to be Nigerian bro why it wasn't really a proud thing to be at the time. Yes. <laughs> you feel me? Like and that's the truth. It wasn't it wasn't really a proud it's coming from the being in the UK and stuff at the time. It wasn't really the proudest thing to be because like they just always used to clown us and try to, you know, with the apps and you know, all them things there. So yeah. I wasn't really proud. I didn't I didn't care about anything Nigerian like mm-hmm. that at the time. So yeah, I was more on the rap thing, like I wanted to Yes. Be and then fucking yeah some shit went down and yeah I got back I went back to Nigeria and then I was just with my granddad and then we just used to chop it up every day every minute just you know like about everything you know and I would make music like cause I used to make music when I was in high school and stuff like on Fuji Loops and being his uh, V-boot bands just there just yeah. making shit you get me so he kind of made me understand that I could do this. Like I could actually do it. I knew I could do it, but I didn't think it was something that I, sh- that I would realistically be <laughs> doing, you know? Because I didn't even like my voice, to be honest with <laughs> you. 
you know, and he made me understand that my voice is like a saxophone and if I know how to play a saxophone, it sounds great. It's the most amazing sounding thing, but if you can't play it, then you know, you're just blowing air into an amazing instrument. You feel me? So it's a lot that I've learned from him and um, that I've picked up as well, you know, and uh, shaped me into, you know, the burner boy I am today, you know? Absolutely. What's the best advice Grandpa gave you? Fuck everybody. Yes, that was perfect. Uh, he said, fuck all that everybody. shit. Everybody. Uh-huh. Yeah, because at the end of the day, man, there's nobody that won't, that, that's not liable to change on you. So it's not even something you should blame people for. You should blame yourself. You understand? So. That was deep. That was deep. I feel, I'm feeling that. Anybody can change on you at any time. Yeah, real shit. That, well, you know, I always look at life like this, you know. You do me dirty, you know, that's on you. You, you do me a dirty a second time, that's on me for being a fucking idiot and allowing it to happen. So, you know, you only got but one time to really cross me on some serious shit, and then I got to ask you out of my plans, you know, because I don't want to look up and be the asshole when you do it, when you fuck me over twice. So, you know. You and Wiz Kid is real tight. That's your brother. Yeah, man. And, like, how did that come about? As an um, 11, 12, <laughs> you know, me just coming to Lagos for Potakot and starting this music thing properly, like, because I was popping in my city, like, before in my beginning, and then moved over to Lagos, which is like the Hollywood of Africa and stuff, and obviously, uh, Waze was already popping, you feel me? So, yeah, I dropped Like to Party, and shit just went super crazy, and just loved it and from there. Like, uh, I think it was actually, nah. I think it was actually, uh, let me try and remember this shit. Was it him? I think it might have been him and Lewa. That was the first ones to like, really like, take me out in like, in clubs and Lagos and stuff, you feel me? They embrace you. Yeah, yeah, like that. Feel me? I mean, the first one, the first person was really Sauce Kid, but he ain't take me out nowhere. Sauce <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, would take you to motherfucking little neighborhood African lounges and nah, shit. Shout out to Sauce though. That's <laughs> real. That's my nigga. Yeah, yeah. So Sauce had him at the African <laughs> hut and shit. He like, man, I got to get the Legos. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. You got me on the way. Fuck this, man. Yeah, now, man. Now I see. Last, last, got a sample from Tony Braxton. Yeah. How do you go about, when you walk, like, how was the scene set when you walk? Do it got to be a certain way when you go in the studio? Nah. You just go in any studio. Yeah. And you just let me do my thing. Like, you know, nobody comes and tells me what's allowed and what's not. You feel me? Okay. Good. You feel me? As soon as someone comes and says anything about something that's not allowed, we out. You feel me? You st- all right, now, how did, how did the Tony Braxton sample jump off? So it was chopsticks. That was, it was actually my idea, to be honest. Like, okay. You know what I mean? So it was like, he was jamming the Tony, huh? Nah, I just wanted. I just always wanted to. I just wanted to use that sample for. I just and I knew chopsticks could do crazy, some crazy with it. So yeah, yeah, I just pointed that shit out, and then he just took it from there, really. You know. So yeah, that's one of the. That's one of the most special, special creative um, processes, you know, ever. But she is taking sixty percent of the shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> but she had, you know, you'll make it a show money. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining, man. Yeah. You get me. Hopefully, she even pops out to one of the shows. Yeah, you know? I mean, like I ain't complaining, man. Richard Milley. <laughs> yeah, we ain't, we ain't worry about this shit. It's Richard Milley, boy. Yeah, I'm changing my name. Trash. Yeah, that motherfucker sitting nice too. I see you white band <laughs> on it too. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Let me ask you this, right? So. You said there's all these genres of music in Africa. Mm-hmm. What do you think's the next genre of music in Africa that's going to take off? Uh, shit. It's already taking off. It's on my piano. We have my piano, South African sound. It's already taking off. It's already taking off? Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's just, you need to. I'm, See, I'm not up this on This is me it, putting so. you on. Don't worry. Put you on. Okay. Put yeah, on. Just go on your, when you're at home, like, you know, just chilling. You, know, you just. Slam on, just type in at my piano on your, 
on your YouTube or on whatever, and happy, I'm, I'm happy. I know mix. Your life, me, you change your life. Yeah. I see who 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 in the game, and especially in America, like that. You want to jump on a record with you? You ain't you ain't, you ain't do it, but you like I want to jump on a record with who? Yeah, to be honest, I don't care, bro. Like, I, don't, yeah. I don't care that much, like about jumping on records with people. You know what I mean? Like, it's whatever, really. You know what I mean, I just I like organic. It's a vibe. Like, you just be yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I like shit. That I see you organic. had polo. You was this yeah, and she was polo. Yeah. Yeah, you that just one. it just gotta be there. Y'all yeah. just in the same area. Literally, but you see that one there, especially. It's, it was more like he sent me some shit for his album, where it's like I couldn't really do it at the time because it was too mad for me. And then yeah, I just felt like this was the right time to do it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I always I fuck with him, man. What do you listen to? Like, what did you I listen, listen to? Honestly, I listen to whatever comes on, bro. Like, I don't. It's like I'm, I'm always ready to. I'm, like, I'm excited about listening to shit that is just different, bro. Like, you know. Yeah. If, if you had to listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Shit. One. Uh, it would be the fella album that has sorrow, tears, and blood. Okay. Y'all gotta go check him out for y'all young people that don't know who it is. Y'all gotta check nah, him they out. They probably wouldn't understand or fuck with it, but yeah, that's my, that's the shit that, that plays strings in my soul. You get me? Mm -hmm. You coming to America now, right? You big. You, you know, you're huge in Africa now. You're coming to America. You're bubbling. I'm talking about this is when you're first coming over. You're on your way up. What was your first time when you bumped into somebody? Or you came across somebody and they was like, yo, man, I fuck with you, man. I love what you're doing, Bernie. And you like, oh, shit, that's such and such. That's what's up. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Man. I can't remember, bro. It's, it's a lot of shit that's happened, bro. Like, <laughs> Damn, let, me try, like <laughs> let me try to remember some of them, man. It's, it's, because I could imagine coming over from Africa, yeah. you know. Oh yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember in 2016, um, I had a, I was in London or something, and uh, fucking Drake was performing and stuff, and he invited me to come over and shit to the show or whatever. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew I had to have one moment you know like, oh, and then, and then I meet the nigga and then he's talking about how much shit, because I had dropped some uh, an EP at the time called Redemption, you know? And yeah, he was just talking about how that shit's taking him through the tour and that's how they be bumping on the tour. I'm thinking, bro. Like, I'm literally looking around to see if anyone else is seeing this shit. <laughs> 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 you feel me? Like, this was 2016, but you know? Now that was here. that was six years ago, mm. absolutely. That when you left out of there, because you know, twenty sixteen, Drake the biggest nigga in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? He he still was still was the biggest nigga in the world in twenty sixteen. Twenty thirteen, fucking. So was that like? Was that a moment where you like this shit really going down? Like like it's 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 game time now because not only am I respected and. Africa, I already got that shit on lock, but I got the biggest nigga in the States saying, no, you that nigga. Like, I know there had to be motivation. Like, okay, yeah, this shit really going down in the, in, in, in like all over the world now. You know what I I'm mean, saying? I mean, on some funny shit, it's like that week was just weird because right after that, a bunch of other shit just start happening. Like, fucking... I had Elton John putting me on his <laughs> <laughs> on his playlist and shit. That's crazy. Like Elton yeah. John, I know you seen it. Like, you feel me? And this is like the day after this shit. Like, yeah, cause Drake funny. put the text out. To nah, burn us a he good put guy. no text out. I tell you right now, <laughs> Drake put the man's text out. Burn us a good guy. What? Elton said, I got you. <laughs> yeah, I'm adding him on the playlist. It's like, crazy, like bro. It's like, it's like you saying to yourself, how the fuck you have Be -be -be Benny in the Jets? Put you on a fucking playlist. You like this ain't no regular. This ain't no regular joint. Right. This is something exactly. massive. Exactly. You feel me? And then shit like that just keep kept on happening throughout that week. And then I'm like, okay, shit real. Yeah, it's real. I'm yeah. And then I start seeing huge, the hugest artists just kind of like 
being inspired by my melodies and stuff and like I would hear it in their records and shit. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Like that's when I'm like, okay, I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> but, but 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 we talking about in two six two thousand sixteen. Yes. Like, but how do you go? Because because this is what a lot of I think a lot of people need to pay attention to. How do you go from getting all that praise, all that applause, all that accolades from legends, to still keeping that same hunger, that same drive, that same all the way up to now when you just you know you selling out Madison Square Garden and you want to you fucking sit you selling out Madison Square and Garden and this. you on a stage like you just got in the game you hungry than a motherfucker how do you keep that hunger and that discipline to keep going not get big headed and just say I'm getting a bay day I'm getting a bay day uh, how do you do that man uh, cuz it's the it's the nightmare I have every night of falling off. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. that nightmare, bro. Like, that shit keep me going, you know? Mm -hmm. Damn, that nigga be waking up in cold sweats. Bed, literally. Bed wet. literally. He be sleep, that shit say. Bro, I can't even make this shit up, literally. Your yeah, album did 3,200 copies. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 3,200 ain't a lot, man. That nigga be like this. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Call Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I mean it's like it's, it's like the way of the world, bro. It's like when it's like, bro, if you have this vodka bottle, bro, you feel me? And they just gave it to you because you, you they just gave it to you. You right. feel me? It's like this shit means will not mean to you what it will mean to the guy on the street who's sitting on the floor, yeah, and who just like. Who would be happy with a fucking um, the lowest quality of beer? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, and then you go and give him this, bro. He'll never forget your face. Absolutely. <laughs> you feel me? So for me, I'm that guy when it comes to this music shit because they ain't give me shit. Right. No one gave me shit. Right. You feel me? So now I have it. I don't. It means something very different to me. Than it means to probably everyone else. You feel me? And 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 you got to treat this shit like sports. Yeah. You know, when you got the rock and the ball is in your favor, man, you got to hold on to that motherfucker yeah. and try to win as many championships as possible, man. Because the 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 bottom line of it is, all good shit come to an end. Facts. You know what I mean? So when you got that motherfucking opportunity, and life is in your favor. You got to take the utmost advantage that you can possibly take when life is in your favor because it's always going to be a time when life ain't in your favor. It's going to be a time when the roar of the crowd ain't the same. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what that's that's what he's saying. He like, motherfucker ain't give me nothing. So the fact that I got everything that I ever wanted, I'm still not satisfied. For real. I'm I mean, in here with a That's the difference between a, a, a person who who buys something, a person who is given something, and a person who fought for something. Mm -hmm. mm. It could be the same thing with these three people <laughs> have, but you can take it away from these two people, but you can never take it away from that one person without taking his life. Right. <laughs> you feel yeah, me? Absolutely. That's, that's kind of... That's how I see it. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, where we highlight people that's out here. They moving and grooving, they shaking and baking, and they're going to give you information to make things happen. You mm -hmm. sitting on the couch, you ain't got nothing going on. Your girl's getting on your ass about, oh, man, you ain't bringing no money in the house. <laughs> you just walking around and you feeling like, man, I'm not making no happen. I'm not adding no value to my family life, nothing. Listen, the option snipers, I'm talking about Josh, I'm talking about Zoom, I'm talking about Wasi, yeah, is going all, down. That's my man. Dessert. That's going down. That's my man Deji. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Say it right, Deji. Let's yeah. get That's it. it. That's it. Yeah. And this is real life coming to America. Oh, yeah. This is real life Expose. coming to America, yes, where you come from nothing and then you come to America and you make it happen. Let's get Facts. it. These Let's brothers it. is making it happen. Absolutely. But before we start, I'm talking about but these options that they drop. They drop a major game. What I need you to know is this: they're going to give their forty five dollar their book. Listen, they're giving it to everybody. All, all listen, mm. all, all, everybody out there, million dollars worth of game world, they're giving it to y'all for free. What you need to do is text MWG to 833 259 5646. 
833-259-5646. That's MWG. You're going to get their free ebook. I'm telling you, I, I need you to get that first. I need you to get this information. And what I'm telling you first, then they're going to give you the game of what they're doing. They're the option snipers. Yes. They're not playing no games. Now, Josh, tell them how you got in the game and tell them what you do, man, so they can understand about this option game. So it's funny how you say it's a game, right? So I got into option. I was a nurse, mind you. First of all, I was an ER nurse, actually saving people's lives, but they were paying me $125 a day. I'm talking about our wipe ass, oh, like oh, everything. ER, they only get $125? Bro, I was making $125 so, a day at the taxes. So, so, I, so somebody come in there shot, you, you, you got to grip them and get them to the doctor and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I'll save lives. I was in a drill. Like, it was like, okay, let's go. Push that, push this. Get on top, Josh. Start compressions. Like, it was real oh, life action, right? Yeah. I worked at a level two trauma center. I was making $125 a day, and I'm like, listen, I'm out here saving lives. The most valuable skill you could do, but I was getting paid like shit. Excuse my language, but like the money wasn't there. So I was like, there had to be a way out. I went to a seminar and told me about the, about the options game. Mm -hmm. Right? They told me about the options. Like, I can actually play a game to learn how to make money. I was like, I can play a game to learn how to make money. What do you mean by that? Which, oh, you talking about like Grand Theft Auto, like uh, uh, NBA Jams? Like, which was the money? Bro, it's literally yes, like Madden, that, bro. Man. Like Madden? That's like bro. those nigga been locked up. He said NBA Jams. Like <laughs> <Madden. laughs> yeah, it bro. is 2K now. But no, bro, it's literally like that, right? It's called yeah. paper trading. You open an account, they simulate real money. They give you $200,000 of play money, like Grand Theft Auto, and you can run it up till you get good. That's what I did. I practiced for two months, got my paycheck, $1,500, my rent money. I put it in. I took a chance on me. I put it in there, flipped it in five days, doubled it, another 1500 So now I got rent to pay. Now I'm good on rent. But now I had an extra $1,500 to do with. Bro, that $1,500 back then, bro, that was like life. I was like, Mom, what you need? I got extra groceries this month. Dad, I got you. But then what I did, the extra money, I reinvested to learn more. Because I'm like, listen, if I can flip $1,500 literally in three days, what can I do if I learn? Now, like today, I made $1,000 in 10 minutes. Every day I do and, this. And, and he like showed us. He yeah, showed us. Facts, like, facts. Big facts. Like, since if you follow me, I post my results all the time so people can know it was real, bro. Because I literally, I used to work 12-hour shifts. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Paperwork from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'll get home at 10 with blood on my shoes. Now I got my PJs on, put on my computer, play the money game. Boom, 1000 bucks, 10 minutes. I'm done. I learned how to do that. He made 5 k a day, 10 yes, sir, minutes. Yeah. But how, 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 how long did it take for that fear to go away? That just like where you just don't fear. You know, I know at the beginning you was like, oh man, you was shook up. Bro, I was but where do like you do, but do you step into it now? Like, man, I'm gonna throw three thousand there right now and do Bro, this. that's automatic now. Yeah. I don't even think about it because it's part of me. Like, listen, how long did it take you to, to get comfortable with driving? Oh, he still can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> I can drive. I'm, a, I'm I was a getaway driver back in the day. Seriously. Oh, so it's literally like that. It took me like two months to get covered with, with driving. After that, bro, it's like, you don't even think about it. Matter of fact, many people drive now. They fall asleep on the highway. They get to their destination. They're like, how the hell did I get here? Right. Same thing with trading. I can literally make $1,000 in 10 minutes doing right, that so exact same thing. So with the ebook that y'all giving everybody, everybody that texts the number, once again, I need you to text MW, MWG to 833-259-5646. MWG to 833-259-5646. 5646, the Option Snipers is going to give you the ebook and teach you how they got in the game so you can get in the game. Now, in that book, what, what, what cheat codes did you give to people? Well, we put all the gems in, like our setups. So there's three things I trade, setups. I talk to the age, supply and demand, and 90 MA. We break it down from beginning to end. Like if you know nothing about the stock market, we start you off like, this is what the stock market is. This is what options trading is. And then it goes from page one by 47, you got all the gems. You know exactly how we trade. Exactly what I did today is in those, is in those 47 pages, bro. So just study that, then start playing the game. You don't even have to risk your real money. That's the crazy That's part about it. You can play a game, get comfortable, and then put your real money in and then flip it just like that. But see, then it comes to the then it comes to the part. You're gonna educate them on all that. You're gonna give them the game on all that. That's that's good. You're gonna give them the game on that, but they gotta have a heart to drop and pull. Yep. Yeah. You gotta establish your own drop and pull. Drop that money in there ah, and know when to pull it. You know what I mean? You gotta know when to drop it and know mm -hmm. when to pull it. Exactly. Now, now, now that take that's a technique. You know what I mean? How long did it take for you to lock that in though? It took me about six months to lock that in. Here's why, right? There's a song or a phrase that comes out say, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Problem with that, a lot of people, they're trying to be here for a long time. You can put your money in the market that's going one way. Put your money in five, 10 minutes, get your money out. Because guess what? The market moves $380 million a day. They're not worried about you making 5K a day. They're not even thinking about you. You're a 5K a day, that's a tip. So as long as you play the game, you put your money in, drop, go, take it out, boom. That's your 1K a day. Well, how much is 1K a day times 23? There's 23 days in the, in the trading market. How much is 1K a day? Do the oh, math. Yeah. 23K in a month. 23K in a month. Yep. 
Bro, that's most that more 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 uh, that's most that anybody makes, right? Twenty three k in a month. That's two hundred fifty k a year. Make it one k a day, bro. Ten minutes, twenty minutes. You're so in I'm, and laying, out. Laying, I'm laying on the couch, right? I'm Johnny Do Nothing. I'm looking at this. I could go and play the Grand Theft Auto game. The mon- yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, paper trading. I go, I go pay paper trading. Bang. Sit there. La di da di da. Play that shit. Okay. Then how much money do I really need to start? After I want to say, if I say, damn, mm-hmm. I got good. And I'm sitting on the couch. How much money do I need to scratch up to start? And I don't need no, I don't need no Mac. I could do it on my phone. Yep, I do it on my phone all the time. So, so I, if all I, I need drop three hundred in it. Yeah. You can start with three hundred. I have students that start with two hundred. We've trained over three thousand students at this point, bro. A good starting point, if you really bought it, I'll say throw a thousand in there. I start with fifteen hundred. Okay, throw a thousand in there. All you have to do is make three hundred dollars a day off that. That's an extra seven grand a month. How much will the seven grand a month do for you, right? And when I tell people, it's like, listen, a little bit of skill will propel your prosperity. So let me ask you a question. Now, do you concentrate on making $1,000 a day or do you concentrate on making five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars 15000 dollars So we would say that you have to start off making at least $1,000 a day when you get very comfortable in what you're doing, right? Okay, but and I'm the, asking the infra- for y'all now. For us now, my goal is to make $1,000 a day, okay. right? If I'm looking at the market and I'm saying I want to dominate the market, I'm only utilizing usually the first 30 minutes of the market. Because usually that's where you have most of the volatility in the market. That allows you to be able to be right very well, right? The game of options is simple. You're looking to make money being right, being correct, right? Now, the information that you receive with the ebook, and that's why you got to get the ebook, y'all. Y'all got to get the ebook yeah, because facts. there are so many gems in that ebook that allows Hold you up, to. Watson, before you even say that, let me make sure. Make yes, sure sir. y'all get that ebook. In order to get the ebook, y'all got to text MWG to 833 259 5646. 833 259 5646. And they're going to give you their free ebook. Go ahead. Yes. So, again, the ebook has all the gems in it that allows us to essentially make this a trading game. A lot of people look at the stock market as something that's risky, right? Hey, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm into this investing game. I don't really know about all this stuff. I'm not, I'm not with that, right? The issue with that mindset is that you got to be in a situation where you allow the information to have your manifestation, right? So when you get the information, now you can start risking much more capital and making more money in the stock market. It's very simple. And that point is up to you. So me, I'm a lifestyle trader. What, do, what does that mean? 30 minutes, an hour, I'm done. 10 minutes, I'm done. So if I make one, two, three thousand a day, I'm good. Some other people I know, they make 20, 30, 40 grand in a day. They stay in there four hours. It's up to you. That thing about training, just like driving, it's up to you. So is so really, it's just like gambling. No, it's nah, not. It's gambling, not gambling bro. at all. Not at all, bro. Nah, nah. We don't. We it's don't. Not. We don't. So a lot of traders, what they do in the stock market, and this is what we saw usually, um, like early on in, in 2020, with all the um, issues with the market at the time. A lot of people were just throwing money in the market and just making money. But the issue with that is that they weren't consistent because there, it was a guessing game. What yep. we do is not a guessing game. We know exactly what we're doing and how to make it. And when I'm when I say with a gambling, I'm, yeah. I'm saying. I'm saying as far as the money aspect. Okay. So let's take the guessing out of it. Okay. Okay. I, I'm gambling where I know, mm-hmm. right? The percentage is, is a lot higher yeah. for me to win the day. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. So I go in, bam, yeah. I win. Yeah. Now my percentages is a starts to get lower the longer I stay in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because yep. you say you know yeah. some people make twenty thousand yeah. a day, yeah. but yeah. they're gambling now. Yeah. Yep. They're saying, whereas though y'all thing was more of a sure thing, uh right. the percentages that this is gonna go up in the next half an hour is like eighty yeah. percent. Yeah. You go a thousand dollars. Yeah. Bam. Oh I cleared a thousand dollars. Pull out. Pull it out. Bam. Yep. Yep. Whereas though you got people that's like I think it's going to go high. No, 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 no bro. That's how, that's you, that's how you get That's how, that's you, how, get, you, get that's how you get got. That's how you get got. Yeah. That's how sometimes, too, yeah. you make it to $20,000 days, right? Yeah. But y'all playing a smart way. Yeah. What's and the most- smart way is I'm not trying to get it all a day. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to get a little every day. Yeah. yeah. Not even just that. Not even just that, Gilly. The idea, as far as make making twenty thousand dollars, because I've I've had a day where I made a hundred grand in a day, mm. right? But I've had multiple twenty k days, and usually with those days, I'm not I'm not having one trade make it twenty thousand. No, I'm having ten trades make me two grand, right? Because okay. when I'm going in and pulling out, it's as simple. It's just math, right? I can get a, I can get a play where I'm making ten percent ten times versus making one trade. 
for 100% in one trade, right? The 10% is much more probable, and I can do that 10 times, and then I can get all that money. So this is basically like sex. If it's a girl, you don't want to get pregnant, you got to have a mean pull-out girl. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, 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 pretty, pretty much. much. Pretty pretty much. much. Pretty you got to yeah. pull out. Yeah. <laughs> you got to pull right out. You got to have a vicious pull That's out. That's it. Yeah. You got to go and go out. What's the most you, you ever get. made in a day, Josh? 30K. 30k. Oh, so you you got a little greedy one time. Yeah, yeah. but listen, I, I know what I was doing again, just like him. Go in, come out. Go in, come out. Go in, come out. How That's long did it take you to make that thirty? About an hour and a half. Oh, I yeah, was he, done. But the thing is, too, now you at a level where the though you can play. I get, I'm long. experienced. You got money, yeah. so it's like uh, if I lose a little bit, it's cool. I'll snatch out. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? But when you first coming in the game, it's smart to say, I put 500 in, I got 500 a day. Pull it! Oh, <laughs> oh, <what's that> <laughs> thing? <laughs> no, Ooh, I pulled right. that. No, that's oh. so true, though. Yeah. And I, that's what I tell all new trades. I would listen, if you just, like, you do nothing about options, we trade you. Yeah. If you're making 100 $200 a day, after doing that for a month, scale up. Then start making $500 a day. Yeah. Three months later, start making $1,000 a day. You can go as high as you want to because yeah. here's the key difference between gambling and stock trading. You want to know the difference? Break it down, when bro. you go to the casino, it's one on one. It's you versus the dealer. It's you versus the casino house, and the house always wins, right? But the difference is in the stock market, there's millions of people gambling all the time at the same time. But guess what? There's nothing as predictable as human behavior. So if you can predict human behavior, look at the chart. It's like you see that, get in. You see that, get out. You can predict it almost to a science. You get in, make it thousand dollars, you're done for the day. Yeah. And when we, to, when we teach people how to see that, bro, it's a game changer. And all you need is fifth grade math. Right. Yep. So let me That's ask you it. a question. When it starts going down, does it go down drastically? Or does it, so you might I have made that. $1,000. You're like, okay, I'm at 1000 Fuck it. I'm going to try to let this motherfucker run up to 15 today. <laughs> I'm being greedy. Nah. Oh, I'm back down to 800 Pull yeah. out. Yeah. Listen, you better pull out yeah. quick. So I'm going to stop. Go ahead, bro. What we say is take profits, not screenshots. All right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you get into a trade and you made a lot of money. What's, what's the first thing you want to do? Take a screenshot, show, your show all your friends. Here's the issue. Immediately after you send that screenshot over to your friends, oh my God. your money might have came down a lot. So instead of taking a screenshot first, you Keep want to make money. sure you pull out. Just like we said, drop and pull, right? You, you take your money out and then you take the screenshot and show everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be in a situation where you're, you're not being quick to take your profits. Ask me how I know. How, ask me how I know that that, that know, happens. Because I took screenshots, <laughs> sent it to my mama, and um, I was like, "Listen, look what I made today." Yeah. I went to the bathroom, came back. Uh oh, oh, it was good. to my money. That's it. Right. So I learned. Take so wait, so it happens that fast. It happens Very that fast. fast. Three to five minutes. Yeah. So as soon as that motherfucker here, whip it, give me mine. Yeah, That's it. it. Take and it, it out. But here's the thing, though. It's a button, though. Yeah. It's just it's one click. You gotta press it. So, 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 what you're saying is. Okay, so you click the button, bam, you made a thousand dollars a day. Then that motherfucker go up to five thousand. You you can't be mad. You can yeah. you got to be like, I made my thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I can't be greedy. Exactly. Because right, right. it could I could have lost too. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So once exactly. I get my money, I'm out of this motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. So what we teach is consistency, right? People always tell me, oh, what if I lose money, right? Do you know what lose stands for? Living out suspected experiences. If you expect to lose, you're not gonna put in the knowledge and the yep. actions to actually learn. Yep. But if you know what you're doing, you get the knowledge, you're always gonna win. Even if, you, let's say you lose $100 today, you make 5,000 tomorrow, you're up 4,500. Is that a good day or a bad day? It's a good day, a good it's an day. amazing day. Yeah. Get your 1,000, take that money, thank God, make 1,000 the next day. Keep making 1,000 bucks, then go for your 5K day, because now you have a little cushion. You're yeah. not worried about rent. You know, you paid mama off, you paid the, your bills off. You know, maybe went to the club, got a bottle, you know, flexed a little bit, yeah. then you know, keep flipping that money. Yeah. But well, listen, man, I want to know, for they, back before we get out of there, for those that's out there that's trying to do the thing, what can y'all tell them to push them and motivate them? I would say this, right? The nine to five is a subscription of silence. The nine to five is a subscription of silence. So what does that mean? That means that when you're at your job, essentially, you're, the people that are paying you are paying you a monthly subscription for your energy, Right. What you need to do is you need to become an options trader because instead of only getting paid 26 times a year, right? Because we got 52 weeks, people are getting bi-weekly checks, right? So you're only getting paid 26 times. Now, if you become an options trader, you're getting paid literally every single day yep. in the stock market. Yep. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The key to wealth is simple. It's very, very simple. Get paid more often than you're spending your money. You're always spending. You're always spending. You're My spending right now. Day. Spending right now. Exactly. Yeah. So you need to be in a situation where you step outside of that, become an option trader. And look, 
it's no, it's not a bad thing to, to, to have a nine to five, right? A lot of times, a lot of people say your nine to five is actually your first business partner because they're giving you funds to, so that you can do some side things, right? Yep. Take that money, right? Instead of just thinking, save, 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 start thinking about how you can invest that money so that you can then pay yourself, right? And then find, find out your exit strategy, you know, going, going that route. Well, listen, everybody, man, you got the option snipers here. Yes, what you need yes. to do to get that ebook so you get this game live, they're going to give it right to you in your home, wherever you're at. They're going to put it right on your phone, the free ebook. Text MWG to 833-259-5646, 833-259-5646. Follow these brothers on, on Instagram, the options snipers. Yes. Listen, this is another million dollars worth of game, business spotlight, Let's and it's it. just like that. Right. Now. I just want to just say this again, man. This man from Nigeria, man. Africa. A thousand fucking miles away on a plane. A thousand hours away on a fucking plane. Them flights are long as shit. And he sold out Madison Square Garden. When the motherfucking New York Knicks be having a hard time selling out <laughs> Madison Square fucking Garden. Put that into perspective. The New York fucking Knicks always be seven, eight thousand fucking short from a sellout. <laughs> but a nigga from Nigeria got motherfuckers damn near falling off the fucking Raptors up the top. So that's greatness, man. It is. You know what I mean? That's greatness. And, and that's a lot of fucking studio hours. Don't think this shit happened overnight. That's a, he put his 10,000 worth of studio hours in. He had about probably fucking 400,000 studio hours now. So to all the youngins out there that look up to him, that admire him, that because we was kicking it with our African brothers, and we told them niggas we was doing you, shit. <laughs> Nigga, you would have thought we told them niggas Moses was part in the Red <laughs> Sea out there. Burn the boy, oh my God. Them niggas lost their fucking yeah. minds. In there. We was like, God damn. Like, so, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of hard work to get like that. And a lot of you youngins be wanting that microwave heat up. Y'all yeah. think mm -hmm. y'all gonna put me mm -hmm. in a microwave, put me on a mm -hmm. minute and 30 seconds, I'm hot. Mm -hmm. Like, don't work like that, nigga. Any nigga that got hot like that, he was cold next summer. Real quick. Trust me. So put the work in, man. Trust the process. Don't rush the process. This a man who told you he went, he tried some shit, it didn't work. He right. came back, he had to get a thousand hours of lip service from his motherfucking pop pop. Hey, listen, nigga, see what you're doing wrong is yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all right, yeah. You need to try this. You put a little bit of that sauce with that. Yeah, I me mean, uh, probably throw a old, couple old tapes and look how I used to get down, nigga. Right. So you, I have all <laughs> the vinyls. I have every vinyl from every Nigerian musician ever. Damn. Every vinyl. But see, that means you a student of the game. Exactly. You teachable. Exactly. Very. I mean, I may not look it, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very teachable, you know? No, you do look like you be playing in some gangster movies. <laughs> some fucking weird. Me no 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 dimes grow a fish. <laughs> oh no, that was Afro. That was Jamaican. Damn, yeah, true. Man, I, I fucked nah, up. I could pass for that too. You could yeah, you definitely could. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, because you know all the all the, they always got the little joint crazy niggas got the one Wet dreads in their face, their eyes looking through it when they about to blow your biscuit out. They like, <laughs> they like this. What the fuck you say? <laughs> uh, well, then he. You could have played the belly. Yeah, you could have played, played the belly. The belly. I could, without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm what? trying to do the acting. Belly shit part too. two. Belly no, part two. Come on, part two. Nigga was in jail. Look at oh, him. Did? Shot and shit. He out didn't there. even know. Yeah, yeah. There's a part two, two was bullshit. Well, he, he was in Africa and you was in fucking jail. It, we don't, it ain't no part two out. Like when that There's part no two part two, two bro. Yes, it is, There's no man. fucking part two out. <laughs> it hey, is Google a part that shit, two. bro. There's no... He don't even know. Belly part two. Thank you. Hey, let me see that shit. Who yeah. was in there? Who was in there? It, it wasn't Burner Boy. That's why they all know about the shit. <laughs> yeah, it definitely wasn't. It was motherfucking... We never heard of that shit. He gonna watch that shit tonight. Hey, is that the game? Oh, wait. That's the game, right? Yeah. Belly part two. To, oh, I did see that in... I, oh, all right, but I ain't even. It was so much no, different. You, you was laying on your belly. Get the fuck out of here, piece of shit. Get the fuck out of here. Bro, this ain't. He yeah, yeah, I do remember laying on my belly. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, <laughs> did the shit hit? I, I ain't I, see that shit. 
You ain't see it. Nah, you see, I just knew it was out. Yeah, you know I mean, at the belly one, you don't want to see the belly two. I'm just saying, yeah. like, the nah, fuck? they should do another belly two because this was not it. Yeah, yeah. that was the key. He see it. This was not it. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't even see this shit. He, but he like if I ain't never heard of it, that shit wasn't slapping. Yeah. Huh? So you need to do this one now with me. Yeah, you got to see. Absolutely. You gonna think about it. shoot your own shit. You got the bread. <laughs> you can shoot your own movie. Call it whatever. Hey, yeah. Now because they got Top Boys. Ain't that what it's called? Yeah, top Boys. That's top the boy. shit. Y'all yeah. need to shoot some gangster shit in Africa. Yeah. You know what? Uh, a personal love letter to your fans. Mm. That's what this album is about. Exactly. And why? I mean, it's like. Most of my albums are more like general, you know. It's more, it's more, um, it's more about what's happening everywhere and in the society, and you know, it's, it's more of a product of its environment. All my albums and stuff, but this time I want I want this album to be a product product of me and me alone, really. <laughs> you mean you know, and that that comes with a package, you know. It's like, so basically the album is like on my birthday, right? So just picture this, right? So it's my birthday. I turned 31 mm -hmm. like on the 2nd of July. And you wake up on your birthday, you get messages, you mm -hmm. get the, you know, from your little cousins, your everyone, your friends. And then you're alone at home at first, you know? And then obviously you're thinking and you're reflecting and you're, you know, you're in your head. <laughs> you understand? It's like, bro, I, I'm 31, bro. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Like, you just have a lot. You're thinking about what the past. You're thinking about where you're going. You know, all types of all types of shit. And then you get to drinking, <laughs> and then your party, and then it's like all your peoples come through. And then you know, it's the pregame in the house. And then you know. You party, have some deep conversations, and then, yeah, you kind of start thinking about what's happening, where you're from, and what you can do, and how, you know, if you're doing enough, you know, like type shit. And then, you know, you have somebody who's one of your people who's there to, you know, pick you up when you start getting there, like, bro, you're good, bro. It starts reminding you of the shit you do, and how. You know, you can't save the world and you're not the government. You're not, you get me? And they're like, yeah, man, that's true. Fuck it. And they go back to party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel me? It's just that whole roller coaster, man. Like, you know, that's really what I'm trying to, that's that's how my head was when I turned 30. And I guess it, would, it might be a little better <laughs> when I turned 31. But yeah, I'm trying to bring the whole world into that mind. Set, you know, with this album. Well, they say a lot of times when you drink alcohol, you know, it brings your true feelings out. So when yeah. you drink and you start thinking about stuff like, you know, am I doing enough for my country? Am I going to do more? That's just all feelings you got, you know, hovered up inside you, man. Mm. And that's just, you know, because motherfuckers, they start drinking and they be thinking about one thing. Some <laughs> ass. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they think about who they gonna lay down and spray down. I mean, you think yeah, about man. that too. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> but is that the is that the your homie Biggie? Uh, man, you're not the fucking exactly, government. Exactly. Chill out, dude. Like, yeah, exactly. you're right. She got a fat ass. <laughs> I'm <laughs> nice. not the government. You're right. <laughs> so, but you know that just show that you you a good person, man. You got a good heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's probably why God blessing you in the way that He's blessing you. You know what I mean? And keep going up, man. When you, you got the rock right now, Africa has the ball. The whole Africa, I'm talking about. Man, take that shit and run with that shit for 10, 12, 15 years like the South did. And you got a, uh, so you, you ready to tear it up on tour this summer. You ready to fuck up Detroit, Chicago, oh Houston, Atlanta. You, this shit ready be a, this shit ready be a zoo. Mm-hmm. It's ready to go crazy. I know you You charged up. Man, I'm always excited to be on tour, man. I'm on tour all the time. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's my happy place, to be honest, except when I'm scared of the, I'm actually kind of scared of flying, to be honest. What? All that flying you got to do? I'm still scared. So every time that it's going up, you should. No, it's not the going up, man. It's the turbulent shit. Yeah, hey, man. That shit drop. You like, I don't fuck with that, bro. You know, I, 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 I don't I'm fuck cool. with that, bro. I'm cool when the pilot tell you. 
Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. But if they don't tell you, set flash. You yeah, see, but you see the thing is, like, turbulence the thing, coming the thing up is, it's like with, with the jets and shit. They don't never oh, tell you oh, shit. Yeah, 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 they don't yeah. tell you oh, shit. Them bitches, oh, them bitches shaky, then. Yeah, them man. Jets. They ain't small. Oh, they ain't no regular plane. Them, 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 you be on that Harlem shit. So you be like, oh, man. man. You be, look at them. They, they all scared. They're like, yeah. Everybody's shook. No one in here can tell me they ain't shook. They shook. Don't try to act like he's in by himself. can tell me they ain't shook, bro. Right. That nigga scared, I ain't. Yeah, all Except maybe y'all, I don't know about but everyone that be on Jets no, with see, me. No, shit, we scared. Oh, we oh, shook. Everybody <laughs> scared. Oh, well, we be on 757s in first class. That, that like, motherfucker get to oof, shaking a little bit. Oof, when he it drop. Be, he be oof, praying to every guy. Oof, oof. But see, at least that one is like, I know that there's a bunch of people on the plane, so it's like God must answer one of them you know, if you don't <laughs> answer me. <laughs> I might be fucked up, but not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look, look how niggas think. Yeah, nigga he think. like, it's, it's, it's 500 people in this blade. God's got to answer somebody. The baby friend. is somebody. The dog. Somebody. <laughs> he like, it's eight niggas on this private jet. We might not all nah, be we shit. we might not make it. <laughs> that shit crazy, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> that shit crazy. <laughs> he said we might not all make it shit. Well, listen, man. We appreciate you for coming through, man. I appreciate you for having me, for real, man. man. We, we appreciate you, guys, you man. Much they love said, and respect, man. Much love same and respect, way, man. Way. Africa, y'all got the ball. Yeah. You man. know, that's the point guard right there. I mean, he might be the two guard. I don't know, you the point <laughs> two, the, the center. <laughs> I just know you, you're running shit. You feel me? And shout out to everybody from, from Africa that's doing their thing, man, because it wasn't just, you know, burn a boy. It was a joint effort. Right. You know what I mean? For, to make the world acknowledge y'all and, and finally say, y'all the shit. Yeah. Facts. In real life. In real life, y'all y'all the shit. You know, you got motherfuckers like Future that some of the biggest niggas over here sampling Tim's and and it's like, that's some dope shit. That yeah, man, big up Tim's as well. Get well soon. I heard she was, she had, she was going through some, yeah. some health issues, man. So. Oh, yeah. Get well, Tim's. Yeah, get well, well Tim's, yeah, Absolutely. Man. You know what I mean? So we just we just commend y'all, man, for making that breakthrough, man. You know what I mean? To the world. Not just to Africa, to the world. You can go to Paris, Dubai, London, motherfucking the Dominican Republic. They gonna be singing that shit word for word. You know what I mean? So we commend you for that, man, because it, it take a hell of an artist to do what y'all motherfuckers did on a whole different side of the fucking world, man. So we commend you keep going up, man. Keep being the best version of you that you could be. Yes, sir. And it's all love. Anytime you got anything coming out, me and Dollars Worth, worth of Game, game is here. we here. Definitely. I really appreciate that, man, for real. Much love, man. For real, for real, man. Real talk, man. We fuck with the guys, too, because they, they, <laughs> they be checking the show. Wow. No them, they, them niggas knew the whole bro, New Amsterdam damn right. fuck ass. Bro, we, that's a bro. You, don't, you, might, you might think I'm copying, bro, but like the shit be on this TV in every bus we be on, bro. Like mm -hmm. in all our little... Tour nah, buses. Shit, yeah. It's like, that's the shit that just be that's on what's up, like, constantly, you feel me? So, it's like, yeah, man. That's how we, that's how you know we fucks with you, because we don't, appreciate that. we don't really watch <laughs> interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Nigga, you heard him. Nigga, so okay. we don't watch interviews, but we watch y'all, nigga. That's what it's about, And it's man. just like that. Right!